My favourite style of airsoft is sniping. I love the sensation of racking the bolt, zooming in through the scope and seeing those single shots hit target and the player's reactions when they had no idea that the shot was incoming. It is for me the most satisfying way of playing the game and it's amazing to watch on camera. But I also love gas blowback airsoft. The way they operate is as close to the real thing as possible, the recoil adds to the experience, they are dramatic and the sounds and sensations of using them are a thrill and they look amazing on camera. So what makes a good gas blowback airsoft? Well, for me, it has to be reliable, which is easier said than done, as they tend to suffer from cooldown and inconsistency, especially in the winter months. Many people only use gas blowbacks or GBB in the summer months because of this. GBB toys also have to be able to use heavy BBs, 0.4 or heavier, to give them extended range and accuracy to make up for their very limited magazine capacity. And finally, they need to be dramatic. They need to have a wow factor about them that makes them huge fun to shoot and for your opponents to react in shock when they're being targeted by one as it blasts and bangs out the shots. So, when Novridge contacted me with an offer to pay me to use his new gas blowback SSQ-22 in a video, I was happy to accept, but there is no gameplay. I sent it back and turned down a lucrative four-figure sponsorship deal. Let's take a close look at the airsoft gun they could not pay me to use. On first look, it appears to be based on a real steel 22, and looking at the shape of the mags, trigger and bolt carrier, it's almost certainly based on a product that already exists on the market, a KJW KC02, which has been around for as long as I can remember. It has a loyal fan base and many years of experienced users and countless upgrade parts already on the market. Externally, the SSQ22 feels solid, there's no rattles and it's very light, but I must say there are some really quite sharp edges. So sharp, in fact, I sliced my thumb on it when I first picked it up. I popped on a Novridge scope that they sent with it. It's not an unattractive thing, but let's be honest here. It's not a piece that you would imagine John Wick using. Let's pop a few shots through the chrono and see what it's capable of. It's sold as a DMR or designated marksman riff, which means it should be up to around two joules of power, depending on your country's rules. It's coming in just under that, around 1.94 joules or 322 FPS on a 0.4 gram BB but is it consistent? The first half dozen shots are not too bad, but with 0.3 dual variance, it's far from impressive. Another feel of it, and yeah, it's solid. It's got no wobbles, and it has this easy to adjust hot wheel. Very nice. Uh, a few close range shots to start. Possibly over hopping here, so let's move the range out to see how the shots fly. And zooming in to longer range, this tree is around the 40 to 45 metre mark. I'm not editing these shots and have not yet adjusted the hop. So let's turn the hop down and get these shots flying level. Not the most consistent, but there is a left to right breeze which may be affecting it. One thing I'm noticing here is it seems to be losing some punch. What little recoil there is seems to be getting softer, but more on that later. Let's chrono it to check. 293. 281. Hmm, the first shot in the mag was 318. It's now down to 281. That's not good. But let's try a new mag, see if it's just an issue with that one mag. Let's chrono it again. 311. 301. Okay, I'm gonna leave it for you to decide on what you think of the consistency here, but let's just say I'm glad the hop is easy to adjust. Back to the chrono. 299. 278. 
271. 271 again. And remembering the first shot was 311. It's now down to 271. That's around a drop of almost half a joule from the start of the mag to the end. That's not good. Maybe it's another bad mag. Let's try a third. That's better. Slight left to right wind. Oh, but they're dropping again. And now it's flying straight again. But what you can't feel on camera is the recoil on the shot is also dropping each time. Hmm, it's going limp again. And I think at this point it's worth mentioning one of the key features of a good GBB, at least for myself, is the drama and recoil. And the SSQ22 has a distinct lack of recoil. It's barely much more than an AEG. See how the scope camera barely moves. Compare this to the electric blowback on my Marui MP5 NGRS. Here the camera is visibly shaking, and that's an electric recoil, not a gas. Let's give it one more mag. Three, two, four. And, oh, it's jammed. Maybe it's just a follower though. Okay, not a big issue. Okay. And they're flying straight. But it does feel like it's lacking punch. Two seven eight, two six five. That's quite a drop. But on the positive side, the bolt is locking back consistently. It's worth mentioning again here the very sharp edges on the rail, where I cut myself on it a few days ago. Be careful when handling it. So, what is my honest opinion of the new Novridge SSQ twenty two GBB? In summary, it has almost half a dual variance between the start of the mag and the end. The shot consistency you can see for yourselves, and these ranges are only out to about 40 to 45 meters. Later in the day, I laser ranged it, and I was maximum hitting 55 to 60 meters on a good shot. To put that into context, my Maruri AKM GBB with the same 0.4 balls can hit 75 meters accurately at 1.3 joules. The SSQ22 is over 1.9 joules on a good shot, but obviously a lot less on the bad shots, and failing to reach anywhere near that 75 meter mark. So, would I recommend the SSQ22? Let's put it this way, they offered me a lucrative contract to use it in a gameplay, and I couldn't do it. It doesn't tick any of the boxes I require for a good gas blowback. If it has no drama, it must have accuracy. If it has no consistency, it must at least have long range and it has to look cool. Yeah, the SSQ22 doesn't have any of these things for me. Net net, it's a bit dull and ineffective and I recommend looking for independent reviews of it before purchasing based on YouTubers who are likely being paid to push the product. But how can you tell if a YouTuber is being sponsored? Well, legally they should tell you, but I don't see that happening much in the airsoft industry at the moment. Take this post by Airsoft Camman. He's pushing the Novridge ghillie suit. Look at the links. They're referral links and it should be made clear it is a paid product placement. Now, I have nothing against sponsorship, but quite the opposite in fact. I think the support for content creators in the SF community is severely lacking and way behind almost all other industries in the world at the moment. So, I understand when an influencer gets offered some money to push a new piece, they're quick to grab the cash. But, at what cost? If the product is inferior, and they're promoting it to their community in exchange for profit, who's winning and who is losing. How many influencers who took payment to promote the Novridge SSP5 at launch are still using it, and how many of them will be telling you how great the SSQ22 is at launch but won't use it after their paid product placement? 
Let me know in the comments below how you feel about airsoft content creators producing ads for companies who are paying them to do it without paid advertisements being clearly labeled as paid ads. And do you think I did the right thing to not take the cash to make an exciting gameplay with the SSQ22 instead of this boring review video? Uh, guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.